came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? <laughs> I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlyle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlyle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlyle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlyle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlyle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. It began here, and it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlyle keeps a case file on the constant, information that may be helpful in his recapture, so don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side. Manor, the Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carla this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. 
A famous private in Beth. Thank God you're here. Can I take you to Madame Carlyle? Yes, please. If you follow me... I know I oughtn't say anything, but I'm so relieved you're here. Everything's just so strange. Preparing for Madame's funeral, and then she turns up alive. But then the awful business with her brother Zachary, and, and all this security. I've never seen the place guarded like this, and... Uh, and I dare say I don't like it at all. This is what I mean. You have to be patted down before you see Madame Carlyle How inside. Are you today, sir? Oh, I could just cry. Sir, if you want to get through, I'm going to have to pat you down. Nothing to worry about. It's simple protocol, sir. Green light. Go ahead, sir. Thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Hello, Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've travelled to London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you follow me, sir. Gotta keep that windscreen clean. I just thought of something. I think I lost a button from my cuff yesterday, probably at the graveyard. Can you just pop down and have a look? For a button, sir? I'll consider her dead when I leave. Sound. Oh, come on.
Just keep calm. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Zachary's suicide. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47.
hidden door. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, Dr. Silver. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I've prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. This is very useful information, 47. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive, means, and opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Yo, Anne, what's up? Relax, man. I said I'd get your money. It's just going to take a little longer. Jeez. And how's that my fault? D calm the fuck down, Ant. You know I'm good for it. I'm a Carlisle. I'm made of money. Just lean back and enjoy the interest. Meanwhile, go and have some drinks on me. No, Christ, I'm gonna hang up. Let's talk when you calm the fuck down. Patrick Carlisle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? It's, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shit? I'm bored out of my mind. So... Is that it? What did you think of Zachary? Oh, creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexei used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreeding so customary in these circles. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death. Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it.
Could you give the Fitzpatrick token to Madame Carlyle's door? Rebecca? Yes. She's insistent, that one. She kept asking all kinds of questions. Who had the other one? Why I gave it to her, that sort of thing. You did make sure she didn't see you give the other one to the butler? Of course. Security detail at a staged funeral event tomorrow. That'll be the first. Excuse me, sir. Rebecca Carlyle. I think that belongs to you. Can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do have... lot to see to. Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. 
Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around eight o'clock. Anything else you want to know? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. But how do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Is that all? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> uh, the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Not very... Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Anything else you want to pry? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Listen all day. Pours emotion into that. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes. This dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He never admitted, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the Stag's Head around half past eight. Anything else I can do to help? Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by Mother's supposed death. We were. 
but he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the staff, all the company he had. If that's all, I... Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. handle this whole situation. I don't think I can really. I, I, I can't feel my legs. I'm, my eyes are not working properly. This flicker thing again. Y you can't tell anyone. But well, the thing is, I've been asked to perform the eulogy at the funeral event tomorrow. I know it all sounds so unbelievable. But even though Mother is still alive, we still have to go through with the funeral. I have to write the eulogy. I don't think I can. She will definitely want to read it, and no matter what. I just know she'll be disappointed in me, again. My legs are really weird. I, I need you, Cassie. I'm sorry, I know. I'll hang up. Not supposed to do this. Always sorry. Bye.
I have a friend who's a mom. She sees that's the sweet, sweet life. You should come and stay at my place in London. We can have a come over. Give you some tips. I'm quite happy here, thanks. Can I do anything for you? Uh, yes, actually. Could you speed up time so I don't die from boredom? I fear I may not survive an entire weekend in this shithole. Perhaps a brisk walk in the garden would do you good. I said speed up time, not my party. I'll just go away with you. Of course, sir. I'll come back later. How very kind of you, dear Mr. Phonesby. I hope to see you soon. How's everything? Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmer, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. How's everything coming along, Elaine? Very well, Mr. Fernsby. Make sure you focus on your work. I will. I don't need one more maid crying in the kitchen. So watch yourself around young Mr. Patrick. Don't worry about me. May I get you anything, Mr. Patrick? Privacy? Maybe stop keeping an eye on me? Who put you up to this? Mother. Just doing my rounds. Right. God, I hate this place. I totally get why Zachary is such a weirdo. I'm losing it, and I only arrived yesterday. He didn't leave Thornbridge for 50 years. I'd prefer it if you didn't speak ill of the dead, Mr. Patrick. Yeah, well, if there's nothing good to say, then you should hold your tongue. Mr. Guttenberg, hello. Yeah, listen. No, listen. I, I understand, but you need to talk to Anthony. Calm down. Yes, I understand. I'm sure we can come to some arrangement, but you really need to talk to Anthony. He's the man with the papers. Listen, you know who I am, who my grandmother is, was, right? Just relax. It'll be fine. You'll get your returns. Don't worry. Give Anthony a call, okay? this up later on top of things Elaine sure am mr. Fernsby coming along just fine I trust mr. Patrick is not interfering with your work we need everything ready for tomorrow he's just bored I think I can work while we talk just leave it at talking Elaine mr. Patrick is not acquainted with how things are done here I'm fine thanks for checking in
you like um, reading? You look really smart, in a good way, I mean. I do like reading. Really? I like reading too. I read all the time, literature and, and such. That's nice. Yeah. spent the last week at her Cyprus estate. Am I right? I'm not at liberty to say, ma'am. Oh, come on. I need to know what's going on. This affects me too, you know. He got it notarized the very same day. Right, listen. You go to their office and ask for Cheryl. She's the best they've got. Tell her you want to see the records. Don't take no for an answer. And call me as soon as you've got them. Thanks, Phil. We'll get to the bottom of this. kind of explanation. It's bloody rude, that's what it is. Making us come here to play funeral and then show up like nothing's the least bit strange. Well, don't get your knickers all twisted. I'm telling you, she's not fit to be in charge anymore.
I promised I wouldn't call you again, Cass, but just wanted you to know I feel a little better. So you don't need to worry. It's just this place, I guess. Oh, I feel like it's worse. Did Alice tell you what Emma did when she arrived? What is it now? Elaine said she saw her on the top floor, stroking the door to Alexa's office. I kid you not. She can't wait to get her hands on Thornbridge Manor. But he was such a gentleman. He gave me his coat and all. Rosie, you need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. <sighs> you mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. So 41 guests will attend the funeral tomorrow. There's still a lot to see to, but we're in good time, I think. In a headache from all the decisions. I mean, pram or stroller. Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I... I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe. Like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. Well, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot. That's what he... Hmm? He's an idiot. That's what he is. I need to stop thinking about Emma all the time, but she just makes me so angry. What is it? She scolded Mary for not making the bed the way she prefers it. It's so unfair. she just discovered Zachary's dead body and was all shook up. I tried to tell Emma, and do you know what she said? She said, things will change around here. I can promise you that. And her son Patrick is just as bad. Just look at Rosie. He has no respect. Preying on the girls like that. I can't deal with all this pretend funeral stuff just now. I know I have to, but Amy thinks she might be pregnant. Amy is a great lass. You love her, she loves you. And now a wee one on the way. I'd say you're one lucky bastard. That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. Alexa, back from the dead, a make-believe funeral, a murder mystery, oh, all too much. Don't worry, I'm sure everything will settle down soon. Painkillers. Please. Lethal. 
you use enough of them. But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother, Montgomery, 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. Unless, of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47? coming along inside. Is everything ready for tomorrow? Fucking headache from all the decisions. I mean, pram or stroller, comforter or not, should I ask her to marry me? What if she says no? And then this big funeral thing tomorrow? It's the last thing I need. You'll be fine, Robbie. Kids are great. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside, except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and uh, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Too right she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. too busy for my taste. Tell me. She turned up and demanded to be put up in Madame Carlyle's bedroom. We're the new heads of the family after all. It is only fitting, she said. Well, Gregory would have stopped her, which was... Ah! Arrived. I heard some of the delivery people were unhappy with the security at the gate. But the wife is safe with Ethel. She never misses a step. Gossiping and work both. Fake funeral tomorrow. Zachary found dead upstairs today. Death is everywhere. I never thought of it that way. Oh, God. It's such a big responsibility having a baby. I have to protect it, right? How do you even do that? I can't do that. I remember how it was with the first one. The ones that come after certainly are a lot less of a worry. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside, except Patrick's mother, Emma. 
We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and uh, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Do right, she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. Can't you just relax for a minute? And that solicitor upstairs, why do you think he's here? I think solicitors are mother's favorite kind of people. Can't remember ever having a family event without one tucked away in a room somewhere. Due diligence always trumped the family. I think he's here to cut us from her will. Very ridiculous. Imagine the scandal if the firstborn son didn't pick up the torch. That will never happen. in Gregory's room. Uh, who am I kidding? He's probably not looking for anything serious. Now, this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. Keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing?
take things more seriously. What are you going on about now? This whole situation isn't normal. How do you think it affects Patrick? He must be so confused. I don't like how Alexa's way of running things impacts our son. Patrick, his only concern right now is boredom. He's too young to appreciate the spectacle of mother screwing up. He's worried about something. A mother knows. This concerns his future as well. All this will be his someday. Exactly. He has nothing to worry about. You said that Gregory. Something's off. Pruitt got word his motion was rejected. We all signed the bloody thing four days ago. Oh, dear God, not this again. So I got hold of the officer. He says it was finalized, but then how can it be withdrawn? Just wait a few days. I'm sure it'll sort itself out. Shift over Ron, already? Did Yates mention anything about the Carlisle account? Yes, account? I'll take over from here. Yes, I'm in England now. It's all gone. Ron and I haven't been briefed about shit. What the fuck do I say to Carlisle? I feel completely blindsided here. I have no idea what's going on. It's it's all gone. No, she's calm as ice. It's it's just not natural. Nobody's that calm. It's gonna end in murder. I'm telling you. that Arthur Edwards stole everything from Madame Carlyle. Perhaps you should let her know how bad it is, 47. What's the verdict? Tell. What's the verdict, Mr. Ford? Undoubtedly, some of my assets must be safe. No. Everything is gone. Not Thornbridge Manor, surely? That, too. But that's not possible. I'll kill him, I swear, if it's the last thing I do. Thank you, Mr. Ford. That will be all.
This is Rebecca's room. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. cooperation in all related matters. Secondly, the arranged funeral event tomorrow will take place as planned. No one can know that I am still alive. I expect you all to act your part. Last, as you all know, I have a lot on my plate and need to focus on sorting everything out, so please do not disturb me with your petty concerns. You are all adults, and as part of the elite, you will eventually have to deal with difficult situations like this. It comes late for most of you, but this is a chance for you to show what you are made of. That will be all. What an exit. Oh, bags got style. Show what you're made of. <laughs> Edward. <laughs> this is your chance. Oh, God. I have to put this back in. It's negotiation. I should get back to pin in it. Yeah. Right, yeah. Sorry.
Sorry, sir. You don't appear on my list, so you need to go. How are you, sir? Mr. Bravuomo? Sorry, not on my list. Please leave. body before. It must have been awful. Do you think it was a suicide? I don't know. Madame Carlyle certainly doesn't think so. Why else would she have asked that detective to come here? The murder. No, not that I saw. All I can think about is those swollen eyes. Hello, this is Cassandra Cox, Edward's ex-wife. I don't know what's going on at your house, but Edward is losing it again. He seems to believe that Alexa has come back from the dead and that he has to write the eulogy for some make-believe funeral event. I still have the restraining order on him, so whoever gets this message now that Alexa is dead better get him under control. Otherwise, I see no other way than to get the police involved. Cassandra again. Listen, somebody at your end needs to act now. Edward is really acting out. He's leaving message after message on my phone. But what if the kids pick up when he's like this? This is exactly why I got that restraining order in the first place. The man has some serious issues. If I get one more call, I'll report it. I've had it. Cassandra Enough. again. Listen, somebody at your end needs to act now. Edward is really acting out. He's leaving message after message on my phone. But what if the kids pick up when he's like this? This is exactly why I got that restraining order in the first place. The man has some serious issues. If I get one more call, I'll report it. I've had it enough.
Gotta dig this place. Ancestral graveyard. You're in my space. Gotta dig this place. Ancestral graveyard, trophy room, and the office safe is hidden behind a portrait <laughs> with a secret mechanism for uncovering it. It's got real soul. Yep. Yeah, it's impressive. in Madame Carlyle's office. I bet that's where she keeps the file on Arthur Edwards. Peculiar icons above the safe. I wonder if they might be some sort of code. Maybe have a look around the office, 47.
flash that around. You're scaring people.
work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. Check that out. Go have a look. What? Someone is playing games with me, but I'm cool. I'm keeping my cool. Over. Is anyone there? Come out with your hands on your head. Strange. I die in the autumn. I love autumn funerals. Madame Carlyle isn't dead, so there is no funeral. Not if you ask me. Well, I still think it's going to be a beautiful service. Well, I'm siding with the Undertaker on this one. It's wrong pretending to be dead. Some and if you're threatening to one, then they probably have two. All right, we've had a lot of hardballs today, so here's a softball. It's... Week two.
Lee's funeral tomorrow. What's the delay? It's the birds. They're making a racket and droppings everywhere. The Undertaker wants them gone before he'll see Madame Carlyle. He's in a right state. So, unless you want to take on the birds, I suggest you stay clear of him. Oh, no, my aim's horrible. Madame Carlyle is still going ahead with her staged funeral tomorrow, and she wants to inspect the arrangements. How about it, 47? You feel a safer for everyone if I just wait here. Till he says he's ready for... Madam. Greetings, sir. On top of everything, Rosie thinks she's in love with young Patrick. I mean, that's a breaking heart to have to be trying to all one. Bones can't take much more of this. If they find out how efficient we can be, they'll let half of us go. So don't work too hard, Captain. Bad news, I'm afraid. Oh, we don't have any excuses. Ethel looks everywhere. So, Madame Carlyle wants a picture taken. If you were to assist with the missing fuse, I'm sure the portrait. Any moment now. On. It was recently used, though. I, I was just, I don't know, thinking about Zachary. He spent most of his life in here with these plants. Not much of a life, is it? Well, anyway, I'll be outside if you need me. If you'd excuse me. This is a table showing lethal. Dosages for the poison used to kill Zachary. Something is circled. Female, age 65 to 79, 60 to 64 kilograms. I'd say Madame Carlyle is next in line for a poisoning. You have uncovered enough evidence to tell Madame Carlyle that Emma is the murderer. Quite the detective, 47. You could try. Impressed. Rosie told me Rebecca has a really I suggest you go tell Mr. Thursby. It takes a damn Unless you think there are more secrets to uncover. No man at all. So, 
you've got your work cut out for you if you do try. I am ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well. If you'll follow me, sir. been at the safe. What is happening here? Somebody has taken the case file. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. Carlisle murdered your brother Zachary. My niece? Emma is not my niece. She's my daughter-in-law. And your niece. Emma is the illegitimate child of your late older brother Montgomery, who you and Zachary killed 46 years ago. That's preposterous. You asked me to find out what happened to Zachary. Would you rather not know? No. No, go on. I found a letter from Emmer's mother, Jane, who was the fiancé of your older brother at the time of his death. She witnessed how you and Zachary pushed him off the balcony. She believed you did it to steal the Carlisle Empire from her and her unborn child. And she raised Emmer to reclaim what she lost, marry your heir, Gregory, get revenge, and secure the Carlisle Empire for her bloodline generations to come. Emma is the daughter of Montgomery and that local girl, 
Jay. She is. Well, the girl got it wrong. I didn't steal anything. I did what was necessary to protect the future of the Carlisles. Montgomery wasn't cut out to take over from father. All heart and no balls. Emma used the funeral gathering to speed up her installment as the lady of the house, seizing the opportunity to stage Zachary's suicide. She did her homework, used a poison made from one of Zachary's rare plants, found old floor plans from Thornbridge Manor to gain access to his room through a secret passage. That scheming bitch. More than you think. I found proof that she will try to poison you next. Well, I'll have to take care of that. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. You have not disappointed. I promised you I would reward you generously if you solved the case. So, what do you suggest? I'll send you an invoice. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. I trust you'll see yourself out. I need some privacy. Thank you. Hello there, sir. Listen to this, Emma. Good old Wompers and a bit of a snack. An accused of sordid affair with personal assistant. because we're all gathered. Talk about messed up multitasking. And he's carrying the load. I'll tell you who. Hi. It's so cool. Can you please sit down again? Yes. If I could just think of something interesting to say during the shoot to grab Rebecca's attention. I had planned to offer her comfort, but... Do you mind? I need to be left alone. Hello. Okay.
sounds like the power's back up. Why don't you take a picture to test it? Sounds like the power's back up. Why don't you take a picture to test it? It works. I'm ready for the shoot. Perfect. I'll call the family down now then. Edward, you can't let Mother get to you like this. You've always been immune to her. How do you do it? I'm the youngest. Guess I just flew under the radar when it came to her attention. Right ahead, please. She really respects you. If you just stopped craving her approval, you're nearly 50, Edward. I know. I'm such a loser. But you're not. You're a professor, you're artistic, you've got your music. I mean, that's really something. We should hurry up. This place is sucking the life out of me. It won't oh, hurt exactly. you to relax for a bit. Down by the fountain. I expect you to be efficient. I have a lot to see to today. I'll do my best. Right, get in position. Let's get this over with. What is the photographer doing? I can't wait all There's a puddle of water here. Oh, never mind. Let's just get this done, shall we? Shut up, Edward. No one wants to look at that long face. You're such an idiot, Gregory. I'm fine, Rebecca. Fine? You look like a nervous wreck. Stop flickering. Well, Mother, you certainly know how to lighten the mood. Oh, God! 
She's been something very wrong. Calm down. I'm left. back from the dead, a make-believe funeral, a murder mystery. Oh, by the way, I told Kate about those texts. What did she say? Well, I thought she'd be mad at me, but she just thanked me. Said she understood the position I was in. We had a really good talk about it. Actually. Oh, what did I tell you? She's a sensible woman. And that stuff in your ex Walk away! <laughs> or what? You gonna take us all on? Don't. Yeah! Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other. And I meant it. I look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now. 